Hi, everyone. Um, my name is James Conk from uh, Alp Technology. Actually, it's really exciting to be here today. That's because we are we're a company that mainly been in stealth for the last uh, six, uh, almost seven years. And this is actually one of the first time in a, in a larger forum that we are talking about what we do uh, and showing in public. Um, so the system in front of you is um, is kind of our version of, a uh, of what the future of batteries look like, a battery systems look like. So this party reminiscent of what a, a Tesla power pack or power wall people would, would think about. And we've been spending the last six years to make the to make that battery storage uh, more affordable, and uh, using data, AI, and and really clever um, mechanical and electrical engineering. And this battery is actually one of the most affordable in the world. Um, I know it's kind of a bit shocking to say um, it's uh, it, it's at a cost about thirty. Uh, this one is about thirty percent less cost than uh, the equivalent uh, battery system, which I think in this case is a power uh, Tesla power wall. Um, and we've been also, in addition to system, there's a system in our office that's been running our manufacturing sites in London, uh, UK, um, uh, for over, over two years now. Uh, and this is the bigger version of the system that, that's, that's out in the field. Um, let me go to the next slide. So apology for the slide. Um, I think the, one of the biggest questions that we always get is like, uh, how, do you, how do you end up making a battery that's significantly of low cost? Um, so I think there are multiple factors, and, and please don't, don't read through all that, listen to me. And I'll try to explain it as, uh, um, as simple as possible. Uh, but again, I'm only are capturing one, one portion of it. I guess if you think about a typical uh, battery module, um, they are often 50 kilograms or, or over 100 pounds. Uh, our module, battery module, is about uh, three pounds. And so it's similar to a brick, and, and that's where um, the, the name gets from. So instead of using large electronic device, instead of like kind of engineering something that uh, that weighs a person, um, our the electronics, the hardware we use is something that comes from smartphones. So now smartphones and telecommunication has about forty years of miniature, miniaturization of electronic devices. So often we um, the uh, our component cost, our kind of um, electronic cost, is less cost than the cabling and the connectors from a larger systems. So that's one main factor we'll be able to do. Um, and then another thing that I, I probably mentioned in the previous slide, and, and I'll, I'll move on actually from this slide because this is way too complicated. Um, and I will address this. And one of the main reasons we, we can get, uh, this system is actually able to get to 60 to 70% less cost. Because what I haven't talked about is that the way we build the system, when you build it in such a different module and use smartphone electronics, uh, as opposed to large scale industrial uh, electrical equipments <clears throat> for, for battery building, um, you, you use a completely different architecture. And the architecture changes that instead of Tesla using one brand after build a gigafactory to spend two billion and a 10 year partnership with Panasonic, and you have a battery from the ground up from software, hardware um, uh, to electronics to use one type of cells. Our architecture allows us to use multiple types. And effectively, what we're able to do, the differences between manufacturer on the same battery type uh, is also a difference between a used battery and a new batteries. So that means that right now, for the last two years, we've actually been running um, the batteries from one of our suppliers of used cells, which you don't pay anything for. Uh, and, and this is, uh, we're able to handle heterogeneous cells, a uh, battery from different manufacturers to use cells. So there, we're actually achieving something that is 50% uh, less cost than, than a Tesla wall, uh, uh, Tesla power wall. And uh, it has potential in mass manufacturing to re reduce the cost by 70%, uh, which is something that I can talk about uh, that we're doing in Asia right now. Um, so obviously, when you, we use uh, on the topics of not just using our system for new cells when you end up using repurposed cells. Uh, a little known fact that a lot of used battery at the end of the EV life cycle still has about 70, 80, and sometimes 90, in real world, 95% of capacity left in them. They're currently just thrown away. Meanwhile, we have to mine the same minerals in developing countries often uh, to get the, six, six, uh, um, the same chemical. So the, the, the idea of reusing battery uh, is not new. But here we have real case study that we can we can extend this battery right two three four over ten years of life. So I don't know about you. I think it is. I think in terms of a kind of resource scarce, energy scarce world, uh, I think one of the first things that we use actually should be reused, and it comes with economics of um, of, of less than fifty percent. That's always. Um, I mean, no nothing more can be more circuit economical. 
Um, so this, again, I will, you know, kind of touch this slide because um, this is on a new sales to user comparison. Again, we character, um, compare ourselves here to Tesla. They want the lowest cost, uh, grid scale, larger scale battery system. And we're about uh, half this price. And as it, um, basically, uh, from, from, the, from that reason, the payback period, the payback project, the project payback for our, um, for our projects over the world, the last three projects over the world is about uh, close to half. Of, um, of similar systems. Um, so I'm just going to go through quite quickly. Um, I mentioned about earlier on the case study in London. Um, instead of, um, we discovered that we can do this, um, well, we've been researching for the last seven years. Uh, we did the first prototype, uh, the big, big prototype two years ago. So we actually built, uh, this is our kind of mini manufacturing site in London. And the entire site is run by the two battery systems right there. There are solar panels up in front. So at that point, we're about 290 kilowatt hours uh, compared to 600, uh, which is um, which is the current current price per kilowatt hour. And what we've done since after we ran it for over a year and had really good data, we expanded to to this sites. Um, that's and that, and you can see that already the cost had jumped down another 30 uh, percent. That's because at that time our supplier, which is the one one of the largest e mobility micro mobility company in the world. Um, they provide us with their end of life sales, um, and we we ended up not paying for those sales. So that site right now we're running, we're probably one of the only systems in the world that can run uh, heterogeneous, mixed use, new and different chemistry. Um, so primarily the chemistry here is lithium ion, which is what we've been working on. Um, I think I will stop here because um, hopefully I have questions. But other than that, um, yeah, thank you. I have so many questions. Uh, it looks like great technology and and uh, some real innovation going on there. Um, but a, a couple of concerns that I uh, that immediately came to mind when I was listening to you was um, compact storage of batteries uh, always creates somewhat of a hazard. Um, let's say you're putting a lot of cells together uh, in a small location. Uh, the safety features was one issue that I was concerned about. The second one was. Um, um, maintenance if you're putting together um, both hybrid cells technology uh, chemistries as well as new and used uh, when something when one of those cells goes bad how do you how do you pull that out of the um, the entire array and then how do you service that to keep it back online uh, is it modular enough to be able to do that is that simple how costly is that those are, those are the two questions that came to my mind oh brian excellent questions and, and thank you for that um, so we have 120 fundings from um, in US and Europe on, on different innovation funding, and the majority of those was on safety. It was on AI and safety. So on the thermal management side, I mean that's this very important, a very important part. So we actually have one of the most advanced because we use heterogeneous cells and end of life cells. We already have one of the most advanced thermal management and safety management. So this goes back to the module when it, the, the when a battery weights a human or weights a brick a, a three pound uh, unit, uh, it means that individual unit you can now track these cells very closely. You now you know if something happens in that in that unit which is three pounds, that unit gets shut down. It doesn't kind of propagate to the next one. So that's a that's an entire architectural framework um, that allowed its kind of safety not to propagate. You know, I can go over some of the phase change, some of the chemistry that we did. Uh, I mean, chemistry not in batteries, but different chemistry, uh, kind of thermal management system we put on top of it. And also, every single cell is fused. But I think, you know, we have a good six years of our research, and it's probably this is not a forum. Uh, the other factor about maintenance is perfect. I mean, like, we, we see this uh, addressing not really, not Tesla, not, it's not, it doesn't belong EV, it doesn't belong which person's home. I think there's about two to three billion people in the world uh, that currently still use diesel generators for electric generation at least part of the day. I mean, think the entire continent of Africa, think India, think Indonesia, think a large part of Asia. So we actually really feel that to, to truly turn the world renewable, you need energy solutions because the, the, the sun does set, the wind does, it is quite intermittent. And with our cut for, for energy, uh, we, it's very tough to, um, it's very tough to transition to fossil fuel.